Yeah, so the middle part goes back. It's collar. Okay. It's yeah. on the here. Yeah. Then it's always in the orthogonal position to this axis. Yep. So loosen this up. It's a, sort of a dual hack. You have to loosen this, and then you also have to loosen this. Okay. So you wrench tighten that, and then you can finger loosen it. Does it, does it get looser during the run, or how does that work? You don't have to. You don't have to wrench tighten. It. Okay. You can. Yeah, I know. That Maybe you're just really strong. Because <laughs> usually when you wrench tighten something, you can't open it with your finger. There's not a lot of give for these. Oh, I see. Maybe okay. for this one, but not for this one. This one, because there's no give, you can okay. easily unscrew it. Okay, got it. Right. So you just kind of twist the, the the base of it. Yeah. yeah. So this rod you can screw rod. Okay. over here, and then this nut you can also screw from the top of the rod. Got and then this one, this screw comes in and out. Okay. okay. Yeah. When this is attached, you have to remove it from the back. Okay. That's why we kept this pin here. And that's the format we'll be using in it, so we'll be doing it exactly this way. Yeah. See what I did there? I opened this valve and I yeah. pushed out the air so I can push the fish piston down. Yeah. And then that allowed me the little clearance to get yeah. it out. Okay. All right. Bring it on over to a bench. This is the designated French press area. And just start dismantling. So, first by taking that out. Oh, okay. So that's the rod. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there's the orange. Okay. Okay. This setup. Take apart by unlatching that. So this is the culprit that was leaking. Okay. Use a regular wrench. I don't know where our regular wrench is, but you know, channel locks do this as well. So aside from this connection, mm -hmm. that's and the only thing that's holding this in place slot for the piston. But okay. Once you remove the piston and unscrew this, okay. then it's pretty much free. Okay. Okay? Yep. And that's how we keep it. Give a nice little scan. See that? That was the dead volume that you were talking about. Uh, okay. Out, okay. Okay. You can take yeah. that out. You just put a pipe better in there and you can go out. Okay. Yeah. So in between samples you can rinse it out, right? The chamber? You can't. So that, you know, you just take water, yeah. suck up, suck down. Up, okay. I do it a couple of times, especially since there's a dead volume. Okay. This oh, okay. comes out, and then you can unscrew this and this, and it'll look essentially like that. Okay. All right? That's what the dead end looks like. Okay. If you're wondering about those marks, the brown marks in our setup, so one of them's cleaner than the other. One's from uh, Kim's lab. Okay. Jane Kim's lab. Okay. One's from the Montclair lab. Okay. When we first started using this, I don't know under whose advice we started doing this, but we got the idea of lubricating the parts with 